Every year in autumn and spring, tens of thousands of migratory birds are caught or are simply shot as they fly to and from their winter habitats. Around the Mediterranean, their flight ends in a hail of bullets. Kalashnikov, AK-47. But activists from all over the world are increasingly successful in putting the poachers out of business with the help of local police. Even at night and undercover, they collect evidence against the bird killers. From Italy to Lebanon, they destroy the catching nets and equipment and free trapped birds. We have a big chances that he's gonna fly again. Dozens of eagles that would have ended up as trophies can be released into the wild again. Thanks to the fighters against bird slaughter. Thanks to the bird guards. The Mount Lebanon range. It stretches across the Mediterranean coast for 160 kilometers. A bottleneck on the eastern route of European migratory birds to their winter quarters in Africa. The majority of European cranes and pelicans, more than half of all storks, honey buzzards, kites and the entire lesser spotted eagle population in Europe, but also swallows and songbirds, take this route. This is the end point for thousands, because Lebanese poachers shoot at everything that has wings. The poachers are shooting, although most of these migratory birds are also protected in Lebanon. And often just for fun, the carcasses remain. Since 2017, bird conservationists from all over the world have followed, every year, an invitation from the Committee Against Bird Slaughter from Germany, CABS for short, and the Society for the Protection of Nature in Lebanon, SPNL, to help the authorities to combat poaching and promote responsible hunting. Most already know each other from previous years and come back to every new bird protection camp. In the autumn of 2019, there were 14 activists from all over the world. I'm Tolga from Turkey. My name is Filippo, I come from Italy. I'm Geraldine, I'm from France. I'm Lloyd, I'm from England. I am Adonis from Lebanon. I'm Andre, I'm from Bermuda. I am Shirin, I come from Lebanon. I'm Jason, I'm from the United States. The international team is supported by local bird watchers from the Association for Bird Conservation in Lebanon and responsible hunters from the Middle East Sustainable Hunting Center. The operations begin on the day of arrival. From mid-September to mid-October, activists control the bird migration hotspots here in small teams in order to track down poachers, document kills and collect evidence so that the perpetrators can be handed over to the judiciary, if possible. As here in the Egba area, northeast of Beirut, they were able to surprise several illegal hunters who always try to talk themselves out of trouble. We only shoot small, allowed birds. There are no birds here at all, they fly much higher. It is therefore all the more important to collect clear evidence so that the police or the internal security forces, an army unit also responsible for combating poaching, really do something with success. What we observe here in Ekpe shows that our operations here and our presence here has a very strong deterrent effect. You can see the hunters immediately leaving the area, as soon as we approach them, we find much less fresh shot cartridges and the most important thing is we find much less dead birds. But it doesn't look like that in other areas. During an expedition to the north in the Akar district, Axel's team quickly finds acoustic decoys that belong to swallow hunters. Swallows are also protected in Lebanon. Snunu, our swallow, in Germany, where I come from, Snunu's are declining. The population is going down. Prevention through education is one of the tactics used by bird conservationists. 
Their real targets here, however, are the mountain slopes where poachers hunt for birds of prey. The carcasses they find testify to a massacre, especially of lesser spotted eagles. So this is a magnificent lesser spotted eagle, a species of international conservation concern. Where I come from, from Germany, we have about 80 or 90 breeding pairs left and a lot of efforts and a lot of money is invested to protect these birds and their breeding grounds. But this is all for nothing if they got killed here in the Lebanon. And these birds need to get at least four years old to reach breeding age and they have a maximum number of one chick per year. This means that um, just to replace itself for the next generation, lesser spotted eagles have to cross this country at least 10 times and to survive this. Reason enough to lie in wait the next morning. It is the weekend in high season for bird hunters. Lesser spotted eagles and sparrowhawks fall from the sky. You shot it. I have him. Axel and his team try to track down the shooter. He's right behind that tree right A shot Sparrowhawk pinpoints the perpetrator, but he shows no awareness of wrongdoing and even happily shoots on. The activists briefly confiscate the weapon, but because they have no powers to detain poachers and the police that have been informed are delayed, they have to let the man go. The anger about it is also an issue at a late breakfast, but Axel has a plan. Of course I'm not very happy that uh, we had to let this poacher go, but the police came too late. And we are not the police, so we were not able to stop this guy. And so we have to live with that. But uh, the good thing is that we found the place where um, Many, many eagles were shot and now we're going back to base and tomorrow we'll sit together with the whole team and develop a plan how we cope with it and um, yeah, we will send more teams here in the coming days. In fact, it doesn't take long for the next poacher to strike at the same place and be caught red-handed. With video as evidence and this time the police are faster. The poacher is arrested, like 18 other poachers during this autumn campaign. The injured sparrowhawk can be saved like a dozen other birds of prey. Provided with water, these animals are regularly taken to Beirut to see veterinarian Dr. Gabi Hilan, who examines and treats the animals. Nice How are you? Hi. Good? These are the x-rays from Mr. Black Kite, right? So actually, uh, he has a big chances that he's going to fly again. After their recovery, these birds were released in the south, on the border with Israel. In the meantime, Axel's team accepts an invitation from a businessman in the north to Denia, which is a mecca for poachers during the migration period. Mohammed Fafat is a hotelier and has his own goals. I want to make the area a bird sanctuary where my guests can watch birds. To do this, he needs the support of the animal rights activists who put in a good word with the government and who are supposed to help drive out the poachers gathering here every evening for a true massacre of swallows and songbirds. I'm in a state of shock, to be honest, this is a massacre beyond every imagination what is happening here right now. And we are feeling kind of helpless because uh, there's nothing we can do then to document this with our night vision and our video cameras. I think we are the first who are witnessing this. And if you see this, you know, it is clear why these birds are on the way to extinction. A problem that cannot be solved with a police operation alone because hundreds of hunters from all over the area are involved. There is so much poaching and shooting in Denia that the hunters have to be reminded via signs that there are residential areas with children. In addition to the swallows at night, 
Storks and lots of birds of prey are shot here during the day. Eagles, owls and buzzards. These are AK-47, also known as Kalashnikov cartridges. In, in Lebanon, most people have automatic weapons. Axel and his colleagues search the fields for bird carcasses and other traces of the daily and nightly massacre. Lloyd Scott, an activist from Great Britain, knows each of the found and unfortunately often endangered species. This is the remains of a bee eater, you can see with the yes, iridescence, the yeah. it's the green. Nightjar, they're more closely related to these, the owls, scops owls. Nightjar are basically like primitive owls. Mm -hmm. and this bird is a corn crake, cracks cracks. These are highly endangered um, all across Europe now. Looks like a... Big owl? No, this is a juvenile kestrel. You can see from the plumage. Mm. And the adults will have more distinct uh, black, black areas on the tips of the wings there. It's a falcon. Mm. Ah, it's falcon? Yeah, yeah. It's clear that this area is a highly significant bottleneck for migration for birds moving from Europe and Asia through to sub-Saharan Africa. Um, it's an incredibly significant flyway for them. As you can see, every single one of these birds is legally protected and it's wholesale indiscriminate massacres. Attempts to persuade hunters to rethink have had little success here in northern Lebanon. The animal rights activists are finding more and more bird carcasses, including those of the lesser spotted eagles. Lloyd is stunned by the scale. Of all the countries I've ever been to, it's probably the biggest country of contrast. Um, you have these moments where you're photographing and documenting dozens of dead birds, and then the next minute you have a moment where you just forget and look up and see something so incredible. And it, it, it is, it's just a phenomenal thing to see. You forget for a moment and then the next minute it can turn just like that, and then there's the massacres again. It just makes, it beggars belief why people do this. Migration time in Lebanon. A few days later, via satellite images on the internet, the activists discovered possible bird nets in the Baja area. Acoustic decoys with the call of black caps reinforce the suspicion that Baja is a stronghold of bird catchers. And indeed, the bird guardians find what they're looking for a net. The team doesn't hesitate for long. The activists storm the property with the blessing of the anti-poaching unit, which has been notified and is on site within 15 minutes. The activists tear down the stakes and collect many meters of nets. So this was a very successful operation. I'm very happy how it went. So we found this extremely huge trapping installation with about seven nets equipped with many loudspeakers. We reported it to the ISF, Internal Security Forces. They responded extremely quickly and the whole team, including the police, did a very good job. Not for the first time. It was only spring last year when a CABS team first found uh, one net trapping site here. Subsequently we've done a survey of the area and we discovered that there was lots of decoy callers. Some are for shooting but lots of them are for large trapping installations like this site today. Um, birds are trapped basically for consumption and for profit so they'll trap potentially hundreds of birds a night during the peak migration seasons uh, and sell them on for, for profit. Seized nets were not the only reward for animal rights activists. So sometimes we are lucky and we find live birds in the net, like this black cap, and it was pretty badly uh, entangled in the net, but we were able to release it safely and um, yeah, it flew off and now it can continue its journey to Africa. During the bird protection campaign in autumn 2019, CABS activists destroyed dozens of bird catching nets and equipment, arrested poachers and had a number of weapons confiscated. 
The biggest success was a joint press conference in Egbert, a poaching hotspot to which CABS and its Lebanese partners welcomed the ambassadors of Germany, Poland, Denmark and Austria and the Minister of the Environment. Killing those birds is beyond any civilization or international rules. And uh, if we don't go hard on those people, giving them very strong fines and putting them in jail, people will not get scared and they will not respect the law. But we can do much more and we will do much more. So thank you very much. A statement that gives hope. I think this event was extremely important for our campaign because um, yeah, we had the minister coming, but the most important thing was that the, this event attracted a lot of Lebanese media and they will transport the message to our target audience, the Lebanese people, the Lebanese poachers and hunters, so that they know about our mission and um, first of all this will be a good deterrent and secondly um, it's also uh, important um, you know, to make awareness here in the Lebanon. So um, I'm, I'm pretty happy and uh, I think it was a very good day for our campaign. So that the migratory birds can fly over Lebanon safely at some point. For this, the CABS bird guards want to continue and keep returning.